Welcome back to the CNR Collector channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the NIDAR reflector sight, uh, model 47. Um, I acquired one of these a little while ago and uh, I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, some history behind it. It originally was um, uh, patented back in 1945 and uh, came to market late 1945, about November, and uh, probably went all the way through the f uh, early 50s. I, I'm not entirely sure when they stopped selling them. Um, there was two different models with uh, two different bases to it, but the site was the same. There was a receiver mount and uh, another mount that was flat. Uh, this particular one is the receiver mount, which is curved. Um, it was marketed uh, as a reflector sight that was similar to those that were used by allies in, uh, in World War II. Uh, the big difference with this one is uh, the reticle is not illuminated uh, via electricity. It's actually illuminated uh, via ambient light uh, that comes in through a prism at the back and uh, projects the dot up front. Now the dot is surrounded by a circle and according to the instructions at 50 yards the dot is one foot wide and then the distance from the dot to the edge of the circle is two feet. So this was used in leading targets and range estimation. We can also see that at 25 yards, a regular shotgun pattern uh, with birdshot would be contained within the ring. American Rifleman actually wrote an article about the NIDAR site in uh, April of 1946, um, issue on page 46. We can see that um, they were actually interested in marketing it for a rifle purpose too, not just a shotgun, but that never came about. Uh, these were sold at the time for $27.45 and um, in today's money that's $362. So um, kind of on par with your current uh, reflex or red dot sights. Uh, there was also a optional leather case that was available for three dollars. Now you'll notice that the NIDAR says patent pending. So I looked into this and um, the patent for this was number US patent number 2633051 uh, originally filed in September of 1945 and then approved in uh, March of 53. Uh, it was the inventor was uh, Clinton S. Davis and the assigner uh, was Swain Nelson Company of Illinois. Um, I dug in a little bit. I couldn't find any information on Mr. Davis uh, other than a, uh, another patent for a flashbulb device. Uh, this led me to believe that he probably worked for uh, the Swain Nelson Company uh, when this was developed. So Davis's patent didn't die out in uh, 1953, possibly when the product died out. Uh, it's been cited in several patents uh, throughout uh, the last uh, 50 years or so uh, by some big names that you may recognize, uh, such as the Eastman Kodak Company, Carl Zeiss, uh, Lou Polden Stevens, the Hughes Aircraft Company, Olympus Optical, Trigicon, and even as late as in 2017, the Cellmark Corporation uh, cited it. When we dig through the, the, the patent, we see that it heavily relies on another patent from 1901 um, from a Mr. Grubb, uh, and that's patent number 683203. So if we look at Grubb's patent from September 24th, 1901, I have to say the biggest difference I see between the two uh, inventions 
was that uh, no prism was used in Grubb's version. It was only um, lenses and reflections uh, off these lenses. Um, this made Mr. Davis's version a whole lot smaller because it only required uh, the small prism to bounce the image off the glass rather than uh, pretty much uh, two separate uh, column areas where the image was brought in and then projected onto a lens that the, um, the user could see. So a little history on Sir Howard Grubb. Uh, he lived from 1844 to 1931. He worked uh, with his father at uh, the Grubb Telescope Company. His father's name was Thomas Grubb. And this was located in Newcastle upon Tyne in northern England. Howard joined the company in 1864 and worked on such projects as the Great Melbourne Telescope and the UK's largest refractor telescope at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. Uh, later in 1925, the company was sold to Sir Charles Parsons and is now known as Grubb Parsons. So we can also see on the site, it was brought to market by the Swain Nelson Company. Now, Swain Nelson uh, was originally born in Sweden in 1828, moved to Chicago in 1855. He was a landscaper by trade and developed the Union and Lincoln Parks in uh, Chicago. Uh, his company at the time went through a couple different phases depending on which son was working. Uh, ended up being called Swain Nelson and Sons. Um, it grew all the way out to 328 acres of greenhouses and fields uh, that uh, uh, they used for their landscaping business. So in World War II the Swain Nelson and Sons had to change to Swain Nelson Company. They converted a lot of their greenhouses and buildings to manufacture bombsite components. Now I could also find advertisements for various optics such as lenses and uh, photography solutions and electrical transformers that they also got into the business of. And with this type of background I can see why um, developing and marketing the NIDAR site was kind of a natural way to go. So now we have the NIDAR's backstory. Let's go ahead and dig into what this site's all about. So this is the packaging I received. Uh, I, I have seen some other packaging that is all white, all white label. And then uh, the alternate mount will say uh, standard mount on the front. That's just a flat mount. This is the receiver mount. So you got the uh, sight and the mount. A uh, little bag with some screws and stuff in it. And then I got the instructions here. Uh, these instructions don't really tell you, it's more of a sales pamphlet. Uh, they, they tell you briefly how to install and adjust them. Uh, I've seen more detailed ones online. So we see this has got the receiver mount. I believe this is a picture of the standard mount. Um, all the ones that I've seen come with this uh, glass cover. This is just a leather uh, glass cover. Kind of suede inside with the NIDAR emblem on it. And here's what came with mine inside this little pouch. Uh, these are the mounting screws. It's flathead mounting screws. And then a um, 332nd and a 116th. Uh, Allen key. So to remove this site from the uh, the base, this was built so you could take the site off, put it on a different weapon, 
and have multiple weapons um, use the same uh, sight but with different mounts. So to take this off, you just uh, unscrew. And that comes right off. Now this screw does come all the way out. And then as we can see there, it's only partially threaded, so whenever you thread it through this hole, it's kind of captured there. So we're going to go ahead and throw that back on there. Maybe. There we go. All right, so now it's captured on there. Uh, the underside, we can see it looks like some type of sealant on the bottom. Uh, the prism on this one's in good condition. Also, the glass is in good condition. I've seen other glass where there's fogging because there's uh, two pieces of glass here. And they'll be fogging in between. Uh, if you've got the skill, maybe you can uh, redo it. But for me, whenever I was looking for one, I went ahead and uh, waited till I got one that uh, didn't have any fogging in the lens. So you can see that the uh, reticle is imprinted on the bottom of the prism there. But whenever we look, up here now we can kind of see it angling off and then uh, it's hard to focus on the front but you can see it up front now um, let's focus on the base so the mounting base is where all the zeroing goes on so though, to take this off of the mounting base you take the allen key and zip these screws out Three of these. These are also uh, part of the zero process. Zeroing process it says to uh, just turn them out three turns and then to uh, zero it. Um, so these two things come apart right here. They lock in place with this stud up front. That also locks the sight in. And then if we look on the bottom, we'll start with windage. This is where you get your windage adjustment. So if you look here, you've got 1 16th screw on this side. You can turn it in and out. And the same thing on this side. So you can just go ahead and lock that post in. And, uh, it doesn't want to go anywhere now and this was meant to all stay on the on the uh, weapon with the sight being removed so we're going to loosen that up real fast because we're not changing anything and then if we look at the base we just got two empty holes uh, lightning holes and you get the screw holes from the uh, for the top plate there and then these three holes and these three holes are your receiver mounting holes. Now, I only have two screws, so I have to assume that whoever was using this mounted it straight onto the receiver with this hole and this hole. These two holes, per the instructions, are drilled in at a 10 degree angle. Now you can see straight into them, but if I can't it, you can see that those are those are not quite straight. And it's so that they can go in straight on that curve. So they're at about a 10 degree angle. And um, they look like they take the same screw size as these guys. Oops. Not the Allen key ones, the, the flathead ones. 
Now, if we look at the uh, top plate, you've got these three screws. These are used for uh, elevation adjustment. So you dial those up or down on this plate. So you can dial them up or if you need downward down adjustment you can dial the back up like that and uh, then lock it in place with the allen screws. So all in all this is a pretty easy site to operate. Um, the instructions that I've seen online, all they do is they tell you how to um, bore sight it. And since this is on a shotgun, uh, bore sighting at 25 yards, I think it would be pretty easy. They say just look down the bore, match it up with the uh, reticle, and uh, That'll get you started. So, so there we go. That's how to zero your NIDAR site, uh, adjustments and all that. And uh, once this is mounted on the weapon, don't have to change anything. It should, should hold at zero. And then you just throw the site back on, cinch it down, and then away you go. Well, this kind of wraps it up on the Night R Model 47. If you guys enjoyed the video, let me know. If you got any comments, go ahead and write them down uh, below. And I'll leave you guys with a little teaser for a video to come. So, we'll see you next time.